Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's having a good day so far. Well, here we are again, uh, continuing our study of uh, the Gospel of John. We're in uh, chapter 14 today, and I like to call it the Upper Room Discourse. I think I've heard that before, too, by other pastors. Uh, Let's start with a word of prayer. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to look into your word and help me to uh, look at your word correctly and the way you intended it for it to be understood and that I can uh, bring some new light into uh, into the situation. Uh, I enjoy so much reading your <coughs> gospels that uh, they just Enlighten me every time I read them. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Oh, as I, uh, as I didn't mention this picture, again, there's a, this is a model that's over in Jerusalem and uh, I kind of, uh, according to the maps I've seen and uh, in this particular depletion, and the fact that it's an upper room, I believe it's this building right in the center here, uh, you'll see. It has multiple floors. <clears throat> I could be wrong, and they could be wrong. Uh, they built this model. Of course, we don't have the actual building uh, in Jerusalem anymore. <clears throat> I thought it's kind of interesting as a way of uh, introducing this subject. <clears throat> So in John chapter 14, I thought I'd just mention real quick, uh, this particular section of uh, chapters 14, 15, 16, 17. Our, uh, 14 is in the upper room, and I truly believe it's a, it's a period of time right after uh, uh, Judas. They just had the, uh, uh, the last uh, supper, and that uh, Judas had, been, had already left. I think it's a kind of a time when Jesus starts to really dig deep into the things that uh, the apostles are going to need to know going forward. Uh, and then over the next uh, few chapters, you're going to see uh, here we're still in the upper room. And uh, I would think that chapters 15 and 16 are conversations they were having as they were walking to the Garden of Gethsemane. And of course, uh, when we get to chapter 18 is, it, is when it goes back to and tells us that we're in the, in the uh, garden. But I can almost see chapter 17. It's a very special treat. It's uh, the Lord praying for, uh, for a lot of different things. And we'll go over that when we get there. But it may even be part of the prayer that he prayed in the garden of the Gethsemane. So that's pretty much the next uh, oh, week or so. And... Uh, <clears throat> Start reading here in John. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And when he has spoken the... Oh, let me... Uh... Yeah, before I read that uh, from Acts, I had mentioned that I kept saying that I was going to continue to show you where I think uh, it gives us an indication of when Jesus is following the uh, uh, the idea of the uh, Galilean wedding. And right here, you'll see he mentions, uh, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. As we mentioned yesterday, uh, the uh, when you uh, after the cup after she, after she receives the cup and drinks from it, as we went through uh, during the uh, during the supper, uh, at that point uh, she has basically said yes. And the next phase is that uh, they will go off in their separate directions. Now at this point uh, she is betrothed, so it means that. Uh, they might, you know, might as well consider them married. They're not going to, they're not going to consummate the marriage until they get to the, uh, until after this period. So they're going to stay 
it's like being engaged, but even stronger than engaged. Uh, uh, at this point, it's, uh, it's legally binding. And so that uh, uh, at this point, uh, the young lady would go off and start preparing for her wedding day, getting all the things that she's going to need to get together, uh, getting her dress made and all that kind of thing. And that uh, the bridegroom is going to go back to his father's house, usually, and he's going to build a room addition that they're going to have uh, and they're going to live in. And that that's uh, and that could take uh, quite a while, and not necessarily. Uh, typically, probably in reality, it was probably about a year. Uh, but the other thing during that time is that uh, the husband is preparing to be able to uh, support his wife, make sure his job is in good place, and actually save up enough money, I want to understand, to take a very extended uh, time off from work uh, to just spend time as the newlyweds. I've even heard as long as a year, maybe. Uh, so, uh, so this is a point we're at here where Jesus is actually telling his disciples uh, that he's going to go prepare a place for you. So we're at the next phase where he, now he doesn't actually leave until uh, we get to uh, Acts, which I'm going to bring up here in a second. Uh, but this is where he mentions it. So I can see this uh, section, it's John 14, 1 through 4, as a prelude to the rapture. And... Uh, I just wanted to uh, mention this particular section. I think it's a, the one time that Jesus actually uh, mentions the or hints at the rapture prior to, uh, of course, uh, Paul bringing it to light uh, during his epistles all through uh, the New Testament. So I wanted to make sure, uh, show an Acts uh, at this point where it uh, talks about him uh, leaving, to actually leaving. Uh, of course, we're going to go through the uh, death, burial, and resurrection. And about 40 days after the resurrection is when John, when Acts uh, 1, 9, 10, 11 happens. And this is the ascension where he actually leaves. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up to heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. And I see that uh, symbolically uh, as a uh, the first time it's mentioned in the Bible that uh, uh, that Jesus is going to come back for us. And we're going to get back into this in John. I'm going to go back to John 14 here in verse 3. And he's continuing what he said about uh, going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye, and the way ye know. So this is our first indication of, uh, in my opinion, that uh, Jesus actually confirms the rapture. And then, of course, the, the famous place that we hear about is uh, from Paul is in 1 Thessalonians. So I'll just read it here, starting in verse 13. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye saw or not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God, God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that which we are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voices of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then of course he goes on to say, comfort one another with these words. So I just wanted to, uh, you can see the correlation there, particularly between verse 417, okay, where uh, he mentions, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And Jesus himself says it. 
inverse free, I think it is. And uh, yeah, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So you can see the correlation there between Paul and uh, and John. Well, actually, Jesus, uh, John is speaking of what Jesus is saying. So on uh, verse 5, And Thomas said unto him, Lord, uh, yeah, I want to stop here real quick too, and I, I think I already mentioned that uh, Judas has already left to go set up the... Uh, Deduction of the uh, of the uh, uh, of when they're going to take them and actually try them and uh, and do all that kind of, and that stuff before the uh, crucifixion, and so I think it's on purpose that Jesus started talking at this point and kind of really diving in to some of the more things of the future that. Uh, he didn't really want Satan to know yet, or Judas. Uh, and, and we know that, uh, according to what we saw yesterday, that uh, Judas had actually, I mean, Satan had actually indwelled Judas at this point. So continuing on. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oh, such a classic verse, one that uh, uh, many religions in the world uh, don't want us to, to mention because, uh, you know, they got their, their theories about how they're going to be saved, you know, and, uh, you know, between the Muslims and the, and the Buddhists and the uh, Hindu and all the other religions trying to figure out a way to, to have uh, eternal life. But uh, here Jesus says it himself, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I just thought I'd bring up a, a couple of verses that kind of pinpoints this in other places. Uh, for uh, the way uh, we see here, believe it or not, that's uh, the original uh, Jesus uh, followers were actually called uh, those of the way. And uh, that term got picked up again when I was in my. Uh, uh, teens in the 70s and they had a, a following uh, of the uh, the uh, group of Christians and they called themselves the way kind of brings back a memory but in Romans 5 2 we see uh, Paul here saying by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God and also in uh, no, uh, basically access being the door, the way, uh, the way we we uh, we have access to the glory of God by faith in this particular verse. Uh, but the faith is uh, through Jesus Christ. And the truth uh, we find over in uh, John eighteen thirty seven. And Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the room, world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And of course, of life, we see in Romans 5.21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so my grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So I just wanted to pinpoint a few of those verses. Probably thousands of different uh, sermons have been preached on that one verse alone, on the uh, John 14, 6. Verse 7, if ye know me, you should know, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father and he suffices, suffices us, us. I swear sometimes these guys aren't listening. So John says it again, very patient. Now Jesus says, And Jesus said to him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? Philip, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou, that, believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. 
And believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. No, just trust me on this, more or less, I think is what he's saying there. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and the greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the, my Father. I think that's an important uh, concept to really grasp on. You'll see people that uh, feel like they have to work their way into heaven. And I really think they get that backwards. Uh, that, uh, you know, when you're really, uh, when, the, when the Holy Spirit indwells you and you become a follower of Jesus, it's not a chore. It's not uh, something that uh, you feel like you have to do to achieve some, some uh, to achieve something. You do it because you love them. Uh, no different than uh, you know when you love your wife and that uh, you know you want to do things for her because you enjoy doing them. Uh, so it's uh, uh, I think a lot of people get it backwards. <coughs> so the works we do aren't because it, we feel like we need to or have to. It's because we want to. And whosoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. And... Uh, up a few more verses here. The Comforter, in this case, is the Holy Spirit, uh, which uh, indwells all of us uh, that are born again Christians. And it's a uh, uh, it's something that uh, unbelievers really don't seem to understand very well. I'm finding more and more these days that uh, the things that I see uh, I see that seem so commonplace and easy to understand, uh, unbelievers don't seem to understand at all. I picked out a few verses that. Uh, I think kind of a stress this point based on uh, the fact that the comfort uh, that he may abide with you forever. I just wanted to pick up on that point. In Romans 8 and 9, Paul says, For ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He is none of his. But the other thing I want to point out is that uh, the one aspect that we have, uh, and that it's going to come someday fairly soon, is that uh, the Spirit is going to, in Second Thessalonians 2, we're going to see that uh, the Spirit actually gets removed. And uh, a lot of us uh, prophecy buffs uh, believe that what, they, what he's referring to there is that uh, it's not that this, the Holy Spirit won't be still working on earth. He will during the tribulation. Uh, but he won't be indwelled in somebody per se, like he is now inside of us. So in 2 Thessalonians 2, we read, it's found in verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us. As that as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except their coming a falling away first, that the man of sin be revealed, son of perdition. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. This is Paul talking, sending a letter to Thessalonica, uh, he had mentioned these things when he was there. And now you know. <coughs> should I grab some water? <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> 
Sorry about that. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. And basically what this verse is saying is that uh, the Holy Spirit being in us <clears throat> is what's stopping uh, the uh, Antichrist from appearing. And that's what they mean by these verses. And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. <clears throat> Okay, where am I? Okay, just continue on. <clears throat> John, uh, back to John, verse 17. Dang it. <clears throat> Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because he seeth not him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you. And shall be in you. So again, John is uh, mentioning, is talking about here the Holy Spirit uh, that uh, he is going to. He's telling the uh, disciples that, or Jesus is, he's telling the disciples this, that this is going to happen after Jesus leaves. And he's going to send this Spirit, uh, and it actually happens in Acts. Uh, we'll probably get to that in a little bit. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. <clears throat> so in other words, yeah, when he leaves, he's going to make sure that they have somebody to uh, be there to comfort them. And that, uh, and we still have them to this day as, as Christians uh, all around the world. We have this comforter. <clears throat> mm, dang, nabbit. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, you shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. I think that's an important aspect to realize that, uh, that we, uh, we probably don't fully understand as Christians. Things seem to make sense to us, and we see stuff all the time that... Uh, you know, lets us realize that God is real. And so I know for me, it, it, it's hard for me to realize that the, how important that is because it seems like there's a lot of people out there that don't understand us, number one, but don't have that same feeling. And uh, I sometimes wish I could uh, somehow relate to them what that feeling is like. I try, but uh, it doesn't seem to work all the time. Verse 21, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved by, of my father, and I will love him and, and will manifest myself to him. And we see this uh, also reflected in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. Why did I put that there? I'm trying to remember why. Hmm. When they shall say peace and safety and sudden destruction. <clears throat> I'll forget I put that there. I don't remember why I put it there. Anyways, back to verse 22. Judas said unto him, Not Iscariot. Uh, so this isn't the. Uh, Judas Iscariot uh, had already left at this point. There's another Judas in the in the group. And actually, uh, even Jesus' brother, uh, he has a brother named Judas. So uh, he shortened it to Jude, which is uh, the book in the Bible called Jude. I can see why he probably shortened it. <laughs> Didn't want to be associated with uh, Judas Iscariot. And Jesus said unto him, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world. So he's wondering how we're going to know the difference. Uh, I guess that's what I just basically said. We can't understand how that uh, 
I can tell stuff and it seems like other people can't. And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whosoever I have said unto you. Yeah, and this is a, it's an important uh, aspect to uh, fully comprehend is that, uh, and, I, and uh, you know, some people will say, I remember back, uh, you know, in a little cartoon, you used to see the little uh, cute little figurine of, uh, you know, you got an angel on one side and, and a little uh, devil on the other side, which is uh, kind of cute, but it has a, it, it has a, a deep the uh, theory behind it. And I think it's important to uh, realize when the Holy Spirit is, te is, is talking to us, that we fully understand that it's him because the other the evil side can also talk to us and so uh, i picked a few verses here to try to uh, relate this in another way over in first corinthians 2 13 paul here says which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the holy ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual and i'll go on to say here that, that, that and that's why it's so important to read our Bibles and to uh, and to pray, is because uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna get a message from the Holy Holy Spirit that uh, contra and that goes against the teachings of the Bible. Uh, so I think it's important to uh, whenever you uh, get a sense of something, and boy, lately I've been getting a lot of them, uh, particularly about this uh, medical treatment that they're trying to get everybody to do, uh, having a little trouble with. Uh, uh, some things that the, it feels like the Holy Spirit is telling me, and maybe another time I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate on it, but uh, uh, I'm feeling that uh, it's not wise to do. And over in Matthew 10, 18 through 20, and this is uh, uh, an area where uh, Jesus was speaking in Matthew. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought of how or what you should speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And again, here's the Holy Spirit. And, and there are times I can feel that, uh, you know, I like prepare for some of these things, uh, for these teachings and stuff. And I'll be going along, going to my notes, and something just pops into my head that I want to add. Uh, and, uh, and it could be just memory, but uh, I like to believe that it's the Holy Spirit too. Also, over in Acts, one of my favorite verse, Acts 17, 11, uh, which is uh, uh, one that I aspire to all the time. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. When you hear something or something somebody tells you, I think it's so important to verify it. Uh, you know, we can all make mistakes and uh, maybe not get a full understanding of something. I've uh, run into people uh, quite a bit that uh, will like pick verses out of the Bible from here and there to prove a point, but don't really read the verses around it because it doesn't fit whatever they're trying to prove. And so uh, whenever you hear something, it sounds uh, like it's contrary to what God teaches. So that kind of tells you that it's important to know uh, the personality of God. And that uh, if something doesn't sound right, study it thoroughly before you uh, accept it as truth. Uh, also, we'll see over here in 1 John 4, 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Boy, they are really out there now. 
Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Whoever you have heard that he should come and even now already is in the world. What they're saying there is that uh, the actual Antichrist may or may not be in the world right now. Uh, he could be, uh, but he's not been revealed yet since we're still here. But the spirit of the Antichrist is already here also. And that's just people who uh, will take a, a verse and, and make it a whole doctrine around, you know, a few verses. And uh, be very leery of that. And I, th I truly believe that when you're, uh, the Holy Spirit is in you, that for some reason, whenever you hear stuff like that, it just goes, that don't seem right. You know, uh, many times I've done hours of study to try to prove something I hear is right because it just doesn't sound right. So back to John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you will rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it came to pass, that when it has come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the Prince of the world cometh and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. And that's the end of the chapter 14. Uh, we're going to stop there for now. Because again, we're going to go into a section that uh, uh, this actually picks up uh, again, where he says, let us go hence in chapter 18. And uh, But I think he's actually, uh, I think they've actually left the upper room after this verse. And I may show you in other, other Gospels uh, the uh, sequence of events. But they're leaving the upper room, I believe, now. And it, uh, the next couple of chapters may or may not be him talking to them as they're walking. Just uh, real quickly, when they, uh, we uh, bring up a map, it's kind of a cartoonish little map, but I, I kept it because it, uh, if you see where the number two is, that's the upper room. And uh, here shortly, uh, when they go to Gethsemane, uh, which is number three over here, uh, they're going to be uh, leaving and crossing the, almost the entire city, going out through the uh, gate up there in front of the temple, most likely, and then following a path that heads up to Gethsemane. Now, I don't know how long it would take to walk that, but uh, uh, I'm thinking that the next couple of chapters may be them walking and talking. And you will see as we go through that... Uh, you can kind of see that. Then I, I think chapter 17 is uh, during that uh, period of time where Jesus is praying. Uh, he's uh, actually in Gethsemane, and we know that he, uh, he has some pretty serious prayers with the Father about maybe taking uh, this cup away from him. But I think that, you know, during that time, he actually prayed for like three hours. Uh, so it's... Uh, I can see that this chapter 17 could be a prayer while he was in Gethsemane. So we'll approach those as we go. So at that point, I will uh, close with a prayer. Oh dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this uh, time to look into your word and all the deep meanings. And Lord, uh, I praise you and I thank you so much for this time and Lord that uh, we want to keep uh, keep our uh, I hope I don't ruin his name too badly Pastor uh, Sicodius and his family as they uh, get ready uh, well, it's actually still a couple of weeks away but that you uh, prepare their travel plans and that things uh, go smoothly and I praise you and I thank you uh, and that uh, you Show us uh, your will in this area. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. And thank you so much uh, for joining me today. And we will uh, talk again tomorrow.